Hail and well met travelers. This week I'm going to be attempting to make a meal completely inspired by recipes found in Stardew Valley. If you've never played before, Stardew Valley is an RPG where you play as a farmer and it's your responsibility to grow crops and look after animals. There's a lot more to it than simply farming. There are villagers that you can meet and potentially marry. There are mines to explore, and of course, there are recipes to make. In the game, there are a variety of different recipes, and each one comes with a different in-game bonus. Most of these recipes are crafted using ingredients grown on your farm or collected from the various animals that you can keep. So my initial goal for this video was to make kind of an autumnal feast, because a lot of the recipes in the game have kind of a holiday or seasonal vibe. However, with the exception of fish, all of the recipes are vegetarian and none of the options really jumped out at me as kind of a traditional holiday main course. Also, no shade to any vegetarians or vegans out there. Um, I know in real life that there are some really great options, but I was kind of limited to what was in the game. So I decided instead to pick a main course that, while didn't really fit into the theme, was something I had never made before because I really did want to challenge myself. So the three recipes that I have chosen to make are parsnip soup for the appetizer, eggplant parmesan for the main course, and pumpkin pie for the dessert. Along with the parsnip soup, I am also going to be making bread, uh, which is a recipe that is found in game. I'm also just making it because COVID. We're all making bread. Now I am going to be taking some liberties with the recipes because in game they are extremely basic. Like we're talking one or two ingredients at most, and I kind of assumed that wouldn't taste good if I were to recreate that exactly. So I have already found the recipes that I am going to be using, and now I'm off to the grocery store to pick up my ingredients. I will see you in my kitchen. Bow. Okay, so here we go. The first recipe that I'm going to be making that's inspired by Stardew Valley is bread. So this is definitely a very simple recipe, um, and I've used it quite a lot. And the best part is it only needs a mug, no measuring tools or anything like that. So we start off with a cup, or a mug I should say, of flour, one, and then we'll do one more. I think about this tweet all the time, and I agree. Is this truly the best way that we can package flour? I, I don't know about that, to be honest, but anyway. And then we're going to do half a mug more. Next up, we have our yeast, hot commodity, but I got some on the black market. And then we need to cover the bottom of the mug with a layer of salt. Now I'm going to assume that I'm supposed to be using like, like table salt or something like that, but I don't, I don't have different kinds of salt. I just have regular salt. So I'm just gonna stand here and I'm gonna <laughs> grind salt into this mug for probably a minute, so. Table salt would be easier. I just, um, I'm not at the level of my pantry where I have multiple kinds of salt. I should get there though. It'll probably make things a lot easier. But the bread tastes good either way, so it's, it's fine. All right, looks good. Dump that in. I'm gonna add a little extra, why not, flavor. We're just gonna fill this up with one mug of warm water, not hot water, because that will kill the yeast. Alright, one mug of water, and then it's about to get really messy, and I, I truly hate this part because I don't know if I do a great job at it, but we're just gonna make it work. So here we go. Mug of water. And now it's time to mix. Oh. Alright, so we're trying to make this into a cohesive ball of dough. I do find at the beginning, like, there's just so many little bits that don't want to be part of the party, and I find that a little bit annoying, but slowly and surely it does come together. But now we're at the fun part where I need to scroll down to the rest of the instructions, and um, my hands are covered in dough, so I'm just gonna do this really awkwardly. <laughs> All right. This is actually coming together a lot better than some of my previous attempts. Um, it's really easy for it either to be too dry or too, or too wet. Um, it's too dry, obviously it's just gonna all be crumbly. 
and if it's too wet it's just gonna be slimy and gross um, and the thing is that I've learned doing this a few times is that even if it looks kind of ugly like as it's coming together the first time once it proofs it looks a lot better all right so got it in here like that and now we are gonna take our cloth and just cover that up and that is gonna proof for one hour okay so the bread is currently proofing I am gonna start on making the filling for the pumpkin pie now I will say I did cop out and not make my own pie crust because I was really worried that it wouldn't work and I have a lot of other recipes that I'm trying to do today so I did buy a pre-made one um I don't feel bad about it to be honest one day I will make my own pie crust but it's not this day so we don't have to look, look at that anymore it's fine so we need to start with two cups of pumpkin I'm actually so excited because this is my first pie that I've ever made and maybe it doesn't count because I didn't make the crust, but I don't know. I'm still going to say that it does count because I'm making the filling and really that's the best part. I don't know if that's controversial or not, but in my opinion at least. All right. Goopy. So now we need three eggs, which seems like a lot, but I will trust the internet. I'm gonna crack on the counter and not on the side, which is something I learned from my friend Nikki, and you should go watch her channel. I will link it up here. Yeah. Also, for any of you that can crack an egg with one hand, please teach me your ways. I learned once and I immediately forgot, but it looks so cool, and I would love to look cool. And what else do we need? Brown sugar. Ah, the other thing I'm concerned about is that I don't actually have enough brown sugar <laughs> but we're gonna find out all right boom <laughs> i had enough look at that that means it's gonna turn out perfectly right okay so now we're just adding everything else and then whisking more like all right i will say i have been baking for like all of my life um I love like brownies and muffins and everything like that. Um, just pies is something I've never done before, which is why I'm like, I thought it was harder. I guess the crust is the hard part. It's me I'm copying out. Anyway, one table oh, stuck. There we go. I just didn't want to throw it all over the kitchen, which was close, but okay. One tablespoon of cornstarch. Oop. Half a teaspoon of salt. Now again, you're gonna judge me for this, but I don't really measure because it doesn't really work that way. I've always just eyeballed it. Yep, looks right. Now I'm really excited for the seasonings because of course it's the best part. I'm always the person, when it comes to baking, like I always add a little bit more than what it says because I just feel like it's extra flavor. I always do that for vanilla. I'm kind of sad there's not vanilla in here and I might just add some, which maybe isn't a good idea, but I just love vanilla and I want it to be in everything. And some ginger and nutmeg. I like how it says freshly grated as if that's something I would ever do in my life. Um, no shade, it's just, it seems like a lot of work, so. This is where things are gonna get a little bit kooky because um, I didn't buy cloves, I bought pumpkin pie seasoning, which I know has everything in it that I just put in here. So I'm gonna use a little bit less than what it says and it's all gonna, it's gonna be fine. The flavors are all the same. That was aggressive. Oh, it smells so good. Mm, just like Christmas. An eighth of a teaspoon. I don't even have one. That's an eighth. Okay, I'm gonna use like a very small amount then because this is stressing me out. It's probably fine. Okay, so this recipe has a secret ingredient, which is ground black pepper. I don't know why, and they didn't really specify. They just said it's like their magic ingredient. It makes it taste so good. 
So I'm gonna try it. I'm like very worried about that, but it's not very much. It's like an eighth of a teaspoon. So I'm gonna say, no, yeah, that's enough. I don't wanna put any more because that's terrifying. And now we've got heavy cream, a cup's worth, which is okay. Hopefully then I can make some whipped cream with it afterwards. Although we'll see how much we have. One cup seems like a lot. I forgot how much like goes into a pie in terms of just extremely unhealthy ingredients, but here we are. Mmm. Not gonna lie, cream grosses me out. Like I know it makes things taste good and I don't mind eating it afterwards, but looking at it in the moment, I don't like it. And milk. I don't know why we need cream and milk, but I'm assuming they do different things. Now, I am gonna add vanilla. Again, I don't think you're supposed to. I just love vanilla. If I'm not supposed to, stop me. Click the video and tell me to stop. Mm, I don't know, I didn't hear anything, so I'm gonna do it. Just a splash, nothing too crazy. It's fine, don't worry about it. It's our little secret. And I'm assuming I just mix and we're good to go. I'm gonna check where my oven's at. Okay, so we're actually gonna not mix. We're gonna pause and we are going to blind bake the pie crust. I've got kidney beans, this is my pie weights. Because again, I don't make pies, so why would I have real pie weights? Again, this is something I've also never done before, so I'm gonna assume I'm doing it right and hope for the best. So, 10 minutes, blind bake it. Looks appetizing. So now we're mixing. Apparently, it'll be a little thick. We will see. It doesn't look thick. It looks very wet, in my opinion. But this does look really wet, though. Did I put too much of something in? All right, I did it right. And the pie crust is in there for 10 minutes anyway. So let's just hope that in that 10 minutes, it will thicken up, because right now it is very runny. I talked a big game and I'm worried that I did mess it up, but um, it's going to be eaten either way, so. Okay. So I'm going to magically clean the kitchen and I will come back when I'm pouring it into the pie crust. So, ta-da, boom, ta-da. I don't know if that worked, but that's okay. Now I did panically, um, oh my god, that's a word. I did Google if like my pie filling was not so good, but it said that it often does look watery and that it's okay. And that I just shouldn't fill my pie crust too high. Um, so we're just gonna go for it. Now I have so much batter that I think I can actually do two pies. So I might end up making another pie tomorrow. We will see. Okay, just give it a, Cursory whisk. Looks a bit thicker actually, so that's good. Oh. So three quarters of the way up. Okay, that looks good. I'm. Oh, it tastes. Oh my god, it tastes so good. Okay. Um, so we're gonna put it in for 25 minutes, and then we're gonna check and see if the crust is burning, and then we will check it after another half an hour to see how firm it is, and kind of just go from there. So here we go. Oh god. Twenty-five minutes on the clock to check on that, and three minutes until the bread is gonna be I don't even know what the right word is. Folded. Until we develop some gluten, basically. So yeah, I will see you in three minutes. Cool. So it just so happens, I think probably because it's a, a pre-made crust, that the pie is fine. It doesn't need to be tinfoiled at all. Um, so I'm just gonna get to the next step of the bread. Watch it burn now though, because I said that, that it's fine. That would just be my luck. We're going to lightly flour our surface here. And we will take our bread. Look how beautiful it is now. And then we carefully 
peel it up from the bottom Ooh. and flop it down. Very nice. So first thing we do is kind of go around like this and then start doing some stretches. So you want that gluten to form so that it rises and it has lots of nice air bubbles. But I'm not a bread scientist, so I don't really know too, too much about it. One thing that's really nice about this recipe in particular is that it's so forgiving. Like, I probably am not doing bread right compared to how other recipes would do it, but this one, it doesn't matter. So the next part is to grab the pie plate that we need here. We're going to give it a flour. Place the bread on top and then we're going to cover it again and it's going to proof for another hour and then we'll put it in the oven and it should <laughs> time out perfectly with the pie being done I'll raise the oven just by 25 degrees and then the bread can go in that is my hope um, I'm a little bit nervous but we'll see it should be fine it'll be fine so I will see you when the bread goes into the oven okay so a lot has happened since we were last here. Firstly, the pie is out of the oven. It looks like it firmed up pretty well. It's just gonna cool and I will make some whipped cream for it later and we'll have it at the end of the meal. So I'm very excited about that. And now the dramatic reveal. Look at that, it's so beautiful. Uh, this is my favorite part of making bread is how gorgeous it looks afterwards. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna score the top of the bread so that the steam can rise. If you don't do this step, the bread will actually split because the steam has to get out some way. So you're just giving it a way to do that. So it needs to be like relatively deep, not too much. Nice X. Oh yeah, that looks good. Now while the oven was preheating, um, I put a second pan underneath. Uh, the recipe calls for this because that helps add to the caramelization of the crust, and I found that it has actually worked. Um, I was supposed to keep my mug from earlier, which I did not do, so pretend this is the same mug, um, and you're just going to fill this up with water like we did before, and pour it into the bottom of the pan. All right. Okie dokie. And now we're going to put the loaf in. And there we go. So that will bake for about an hour and I will check it about halfway through to make sure the top isn't burning. I haven't ever actually had that issue. Um, if you do this recipe yourself and you do have that issue, you just have to kind of tent some uh, tin foil over top to keep it from burning. But yeah, you will see the finished product uh, at the meal. I don't think I'll show you the rest because it's just me taking bread out of an oven. So not that interesting. Uh, but yeah, you'll see when it all comes together and I will see you for soup. Okay, so welcome back. I am now gonna be cooking the appetizer and the main course. So for the appetizer, I'm gonna be making parsnip soup and the main course is gonna be eggplant parmesan. And I'm a little bit more nervous about these because both of them are recipes I haven't done before. I have made like, soups before, like uh, butternut squash soup and things like that, and it's pretty easy. Um, but I've never done the eggplant parmesan before, so I don't know how it'll turn out. I'm also a more confident baker than I am a cook, so we will we'll see how it goes. Alright, so first things first, we have a lot of parsnips. And I will be peeling and then chopping those up. So let's begin. I actually really don't ever use parsnip for anything. Like, it's very rare that I would go out and buy parsnip if I wasn't like doing something special with it. Um, I do really enjoy like roasted parsnip like fits with a bunch of other root vegetables, but it's not really something I. Uh, I would do, but I mean, it is exciting that uh, they only take four days to grow in Stardew Valley. So I mean, hey, they're my money maker for the first year of spring. I want to know if anyone else here plays Stardew Valley, if you just like, 
play or if you're like me and you just have like a million tabs open with different information and like ways of organizing and you um, you pre-plan your, your map for the ultimate um, layout of everything like your buildings and everything like that because that's what I do. I use an online map maker um, and I actually could just do that as a game. It's just like prep the map like I find it so fun but yeah that's the level of nerdy that I am and now everyone can judge me here for my chopping skills because they are not good I'm not an actual chef um, so I do um, I do apologize in advance for that I think the, the most stressful part of this whole endeavor is trying to tie out everything um, so that it all is ready at the same time. I'm not entirely sure how successful it'll be. I tried my best to um, to plan it all out. We'll see. I'm clearly I'm clearly not a chef, if you couldn't tell. Um, I think it'll work. I'm really, really good at um, I'm really quite good at prepping um, breakfast, like always having everything time out, like, like coffee's done at the same time as the egg, as the toast, as like all of the, the side stuff. Um, but again, like I don't like cooking main, like dinners as much, so I'm not as good at that, but hopefully, we'll see. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start preheating the oven for the eggplant, then I'll start chopping that up and kind of prepping everything for that. Actually ahead of schedule, so it's very exciting. All right, so let's get that started. Okay, so apparently I actually am supposed to peel this too, which I did not know. It's fine, it's not a big deal, but it's just, um, it's a surprise. Just like parsnip, I don't ever really use a plant for anything. I think I should though, I think it's, it's like an easy thing to prepare get like veggies in there. So something I should probably start doing more, but and hey, maybe if this recipe actually ends up being really good, I can make more of it later. That would be the hope, is that I walk away with like a few new recipes that are really good. So I don't know about y'all, but being in quarantine this whole time has got me feeling a little bit bored of my own cooking, because again, I don't like cooking, so I'm not very creative with it. So now we thinly slice these. I don't really know how thin they want. Let me see how many layers I'm supposed to do. That's as many as I can fit. I feel like this will let me do about three layers, and that seems fine, so... This looks pleasant to me. This kind of reminds me of, um... Ratatouille. Man, I wish I... had a Remy to help me cook. It would just make things a lot easier. I have a little chef that actually knew what they were doing. Well, this concerns me. Is this normal? I wish I knew. I think this is fine. It looks like enough for a meal. Yeah? Okay. I'm gonna look at my cheat sheet of what I'm supposed to be doing next, because I'm a little bit worried about that. Alright. Actually, we're gonna hold that thought, because the first thing you need to do now is feed my cat. So... One second. Okay. So now that my cat has been fed, which is very important, um, we are going to start with the eggplants. So the first thing we do um, is we're going to do the egg and then the breadcrumbs and then bake them on each side for five minutes. And then we're going to put it in with the sauce and the cheese and everything else. So I will prep some egg wash. Got the finest breadcrumbs that Foodland has to offer. Ugh. 
Oh god, that was probably too much. Well, now I'm really making a mess, so. <laughs> Good stuff. Alright. I'm actually a little bit nervous. I feel like this is so simple, but if I mess it up, it's like. How? Okay. Now, I know from watching Binging with Babish that you have to have a wet hand and a dry hand. I don't know how successful I will be at um, doing that, but we're gonna try our best. <sighs> so that goes here. Flip. Okay, that seems easy enough. I also don't think I'm going to get a whole lot of these eggplants on this sheet, which is a little bit concerning. So, maybe I'll have to do two baking sheets? That might have to happen, we'll see. I feel like it's going to be so close to fitting and it's just not going to happen. Ugh. Okay, round two. I just feel like cooking is more time consuming and it takes more like appliances and utensils and bowls, like a lot of baking can be done in one bowl and that really is ideal. I've had a hard day on the farm. I don't want to be cooking eggplant. I do like the image of me later then taking this on a plate and just throwing it at some poor villager in an effort to make them love me more. They better love me more after putting all this effort in. That's all I gotta say about that. I think it's really funny too that there's some villagers, it's like they only want really specific like recipes, like homemade. And others are like, hey, I gave you this raw egg. And they're like, wow, thank you so much. What kind of villager would you be? Would you be okay with a raw egg? Or would you want a bit more finesse? I think Haley is one of my favorites because she just likes flowers and they're so easy. Like you can get to like four hearts with her so quickly in the spring. Just bombard her with daffodils. I definitely use way more breadcrumbs than I was supposed to. Um, and now I have a lot left over that I'm going to throw out, which sucks, but them's the breaks. Okay, I'm going to rinse my hands and we're going to do our first bake. So, the eggplant is about to come out of the oven, and then I'm going to layer it in sauce and with cheese, and then it's soup and then dinner. So I just got like the most basic spaghetti sauce I could find, because um, truly, if I had to guess, the farmer is probably just mashing up some tomato and calling it a day, so. All right. Oh, I've already, I'm just making messes all over the place. This is liquidy. I guess that's why it's so inexpensive. And then we're gonna do a layer of eggplant. I almost picked it up with my hand and then I remembered that it was just in the oven. So I'm really glad that I didn't do that. And then, cheese. I think the best part about this recipe is that it literally is just so much cheese. Like truly I don't think it can go wrong with the amount of cheese that gets put on it because um, cheese just saves everything. And it's not just one, it's two types of cheese. Like literally it can't get better than that. And then more sauce. Great. I'm just gonna swarp it out like that. Cool. And then some basil on the top, ready to put a flavor. This looks really good actually, I'm excited to eat this. Alright, so that's number one. I will swap this out. And now we will do number two, which I wasn't expecting to do, but hey, that's okay. Alright, so these will go in the oven for 35 minutes. So those are going to cook for 35 minutes. While that's in the oven, I'm going to start. My son wanted to be in this video, so here he is, his first on-screen cameo. He can be heard in a lot of my other videos because he's very loud. But anyways, 
like I was saying, that's going to cook for 35 minutes. Um, while that's cooking, I'm going to make the soup. I'm not going to film myself making the soup because I need to charge my camera and um, add to the drama. So next time you see me and the food, it'll be... It'll all be finished and it'll all be beautiful. So I will see you at dinner. So that was three recipes inspired by Stardew Valley. So I'm going to talk a little bit about how I think each one went, starting with the parsnip soup. Honestly, this was a super simple recipe. I don't know if I'd make this one exactly again, just because it was a lot of butter. Um, but I would make something similar to it, because I do love soups, and we're entering that season now. Um, so yeah, I would try this one again, and it was really simple, so... The second recipe was the eggplant parmesan. I think, again, I would make like a version of this recipe again, or maybe change the ingredients that I used, because the, the cheese did not melt, and that for me was kind of a failure, because, I don't know, it's kind of what you imagine when you're eating something like that, like you want it to have like that nice cheese pull experience, and it just didn't have that. Um, I will say it's really tasty otherwise. Um, and like not that expensive for all the different ingredients uh, and it makes a lot um, so if you're looking for something that you can kind of like bake a lot of and then have for the rest of the week for meals it definitely is a good option for that and then recipe number three was the pumpkin pie I actually loved this recipe it was so simple to make um, again I did kind of cheat by not making pie crust so I think if I were to make it again, I would actually try to make my own crust. Um, it is on my list of baking accomplishments that I want to achieve, um, hopefully within the next year. And I have plenty of free time now, so I might as well try it at some point. So yeah, I would highly recommend that recipe. I will be linking all of the recipes that I use down in the description below if you'd like to try it yourself. Um, or if you find something that you think was more similar to the recipe in the game, please let me know about that too. As for my choice of the three recipes, I think perhaps I could have chosen something else to make a more cohesive meal. Like I think the soup and the pie made sense together. Um, but in terms of my overall desire of having it be kind of like an autumnal feast, the eggplant parmesan didn't really fit in with that as much as I would have liked. So I definitely would brainstorm that again and see if there was something else I could make that would fit into the theme a bit better. But all in all, I think that this experiment was successful. Um, everything I made was edible. I wasn't super concerned that it wouldn't be, but you know, I'm still gonna consider that an accomplishment. Um, and I definitely would love to try this again. So comment down below if there's a video game you think I should try and recreate some recipes from. And also let me know if you would try any of these recipes yourself. Please consider subscribing if you haven't yet already. And don't forget to find a way to make your weird inner kid happy this week. Bye for now. However, with the exception of fish. Is this, uh, is this ASMR? Is this it? Probably not. Limited based on what was in game. Reginaldo. Here we go again. But uh, yeah, you'll see the finished product. But yeah, you will see the finished project. Nope. Let me know down in the comments if there is a truck outside your window as well, as there is out of sight of mine. 
to the appetizer, I am going to be making a parsnip sno snoop. Oh. Reggie, are you here for the meal? Do you want some pie? Wine? You're underage, sir. You're a baby. Hello? Your wine's for babies. This kind of looks like a banana. This is why you come to my channel. Hot uh, observations like that. So I found the recipes that I'm going to be using and I will link them below and now I'm off to the grocery store to pick up my ingredients. I will see you in my kitchen. I'm not actually going to the grocery store because I filmed this afterwards. Movie magic. <laughs>